all right guys and welcome back to the channel um it's been a while since i did an update on this tank so just wanted to go ahead and grab the camera and pretty much take you around and show you guys what's been going on uh, i got a lot of changes coming down the pipeline here got a new tank so we're going to be setting up a new tank here soon but for right now i wanted to go ahead and show you guys kind of what's been going on uh, and i remember the last time i talked to everybody it was pretty much you know i had a lot of pests i was dealing with uh, flatworms, red bugs, just all sorts of just weird stuff happening in here. But I will say, good thing, I was able to go ahead and get the red bugs knocked back. The flatworms are pretty much eradicated. I'm going to say they've been centralized to um, the Garf Bonsai here, which I think is patient zero for everything that's been going on. Um, it was a wild piece that I got from uh, an LFS and I dipped it a couple times to go and get some stuff from off of there. Obviously it wasn't enough. Definitely I'm gonna assume that eggs did survive and that's what pretty much brought in the, the mayhem that happened. So the red bugs, pretty much, I, I used to have a garf years ago and same thing happened with that. I uh, had red bugs in that. Uh, pretty much gonna say also too, the flatworms also got introduced that way. Um, excuse the fish, they all think I'm going to go in and feed them right now so everybody likes to congregate in front of the glass. But yeah, that, that piece is patient zero. So I got the flatworms knocked back, um, red bugs are gone. But what crept up with all the treatment that I was doing with the uh, flatworm exit and everything was Aptasia. Now I had Aptasia in here, I also had um, the, what was it, the peppermint shrimp the ones that need to kind of keep them under control. So I only had, at first, this one big mamma jamma back here, um, that real big one in the center. So I only had that one at first, and I was fine. Everything was kind of maintained. Um, eventually though, the shrimps did die. Uh, either they died or they were eaten, because I do have this wrasse that is just a beast when it comes to hunting things down. And he probably chased them into oblivion. So. Um, the Aptasia had a whole outbreak. It's everywhere. It's down here in the acans. It's on the back in the rock there. There's a big old one that's, that's just hunking away over there. We got some here. We got some. It's, they're all over. There's bottom line. They're everywhere. So I got Burgias and I got the nudibranchs. And I said, well, I can't put the nudibranchs in here because this dude who pretty much just hunts all day is going to find them and eat them. That's going to be a really expensive meal, probably more than what I spent on myself at what sitting, um, at one sitting here. But you know. <clears throat> so what I'm doing is with the Aptasias, um, I got them in a small tank, and they're just reproducing right now. I'm um, just going around and popping off some pieces of the rock in here, and you know anything with the Aptasias on it that I can get from out of the tank and put over there for the time being. That's what's going to happen. So really the plan is let them reproduce, grow them out, and then eventually um, put them either in a new tank or in here, depending on which way I go. But bottom line, I can't put them in here as long as I have this RAS, because as you can see, he is checking out every corner and crevice possible, which is what he's supposed to do. But those nudibranchs will end up just being a wonderful snack for him. So that's the plan with that. <clears throat> Not really worried about it at this moment. They're, they have been stinging some of the corals, but it's not to the point where it's like, oh my God, everything's dying. I do have a way to get rid of them, and that's a good thing. Uh, most people say, you go ahead and get a butterfly. I'd, I've tried one years ago. They eat the Aptasia, um, then he ate all the Aptasia, then he went for all of the feather dusters after he was done eating the feather dusters, it actually ate a massive hole in this uh, red acan. And it was the only acan that he ate. All the other acans were around, he ate just the red one. So not gonna do that again. I had a bad experience. Um, once they're done eating that, if you don't get them on, the, on any live food or frozen or dried or whatever, they're, end up, they're gonna die. Their, their, their diet is consistent upon those things. So I'm not going to go that route. I hate to go in and put that fish through that kind of a, a headache um, and stress. So I'm going to cut that out. I probably won't be doing that route. But 
what I also want to talk about is, um, as you guys can kind of see, some of these corals have fallen down and that's, I'm not really worrying about it at this moment here, mainly because eventually everything's going to get pulled out of here once I have to get the new tank set up. Um, I do have this little sidecar tank here because remember the 60 gallon that sprung a leak. I eventually took the old sump, tore it apart, and now everything's kind of crammed into here. Um, it's really a very, very temporary setup. I got, got the lights from the 60, got everything kind of turned down on it. It's got a hang on back filter with some aqua char in there. And that's pretty much it for right now. Um, I will say everything in here is stressed the hell out. Nobody is happy. They're, they're alive, but nobody's happy. So I did have the uh, symphilia, no not symphilia, the, um, this leather coral here. I forget the name on it off the top of my head. Uh, and it was the massive one. And I think really there was just chemical warfare. It was about two, three weeks in and all of a sudden uh, my blue guys here, all the polyps started to shrink. And I remember uh, the last time that had that happened, I had a large toadstool coral that went to war with them. So being I'm not really running carbon uh, that heavily on this tank anymore, chemical warfare happened, and this is where we're at right now. So like I said, once this ball starts getting rolling with this new tank, I want to be able to provide everybody with a nice habitat, and these guys are going to make it into there, and I'll have them a nice, nice system to go along with it. So that's that for this tank, pretty much just the yellow tank. Um, tank police, please don't kill me. He's, he's going to a bigger home. I don't, I don't care, but he is happy right now. He's got all the algae he can eat because as you can see, everything's covered in algae. And we are gonna go ahead and call that a day in here. But that's the tank. I did get one more MP40 um, just in preparation for everything. And I think I'm just going to run the two MP40s. I don't know what I'm going to do yet with the new tank as far as flow, but I do know these 40s are going in there. Um, what else is going on in here? That's really it. I've been trying to work on the heat issue. I had a fan in the cabinet that kind of burnt out, so I ended up having to grab this, this uh, what was it, some little $10 fan, and just to keep the tank cool because the temps have been going up to about 84 degrees in the afternoons. Um, I know that's okay for some people, but this system is not used to that. And you can kind of tell because of this clam, is he's closed up. He, he'll open up in the afternoons once it starts to cool down a bit, but he is not used to the warm temperatures. Usually my tank gets about 80, 81. Uh, recently he's been going up, up, up. Um, and that's due to the fan eventually, uh, finally actually burning out on me here. So. Um, Got to get a new fan put in there. But again, moving systems is just going to just have to wait for right now. So that's doing what it's supposed to do, cooling the tank down. And we're pretty much, you know, all set there. So other than that, I mean, really, everything else has just been just hanging in here. Uh, a lot of these corals are going to get fragged up and moved over, cleaned up. I'm gonna definitely do a dip on everything uh, to make sure you know I don't have any pests coming along, or you try to minimize the amount of pests that I bring over to the new system. They're gonna come along whether I like it or not, but the more I can do to minimize it, the better far I'll be in the long run. So that's one thing that I am gonna work on here, and just you know making sure that everything's nice, healthy, and happy.